So here we're on the first floor again, uh, sort of in the middle of the building, and there was a lot of action on the first floor. First of all, this is where radio mostly was. This is where our television master control was, uh, and a lot of our engineering uh, and editing rooms uh, were on the first floor. This space, roughly speaking, probably a little bit over there, was where we had our rehearsal room for the Zoom cast. Now, probably you've heard of Zoom. We wanted to give a, a life to the, we wanted to give voice to the creative life of kids and create a program that was created by kids. Um, and so we, over time, we did a pilot in the summer called Summer Do, and eventually that led to the series Zoom, um, which was produced in this building for years and uh, had a cast of about six or seven uh, every year and we'd, we'd bring new kids on every year and they would rehearse on this floor and then they'd go up in the big studio upstairs to do their tapings. And of course it was all about uh, the things kids do, invent, create, um, and, uh, and went on for a number of years. Every day we would get about 15,000 pieces of mail in this building from kids all over the country writing into Zoom. Now, in the days of the internet, that doesn't seem like a lot. But in, a, in effect, this was really the first crowdsourced program creation was the series Zoom. We did innovate and create a lot of interesting uh, new hardware as well, or new technical achievements. For example, we were the first ones to broadcast in stereo simulcast. Uh, but we also did something, I think, quite important. Uh, and that happened sort of back in here. There was a, an executive at the time, Phil Collier, who uh, had discovered that the federal government was interested in helping figure out a way to let deaf and hard of hearing audiences better participate in television. So he got a grant to do captioning of television programs. And we were the first ones to caption live programs. We did the ABC Nightly News late at night with open captions on the screen and we did the Julia Child series for example. And then, uh, you know, but that wasn't terribly satisfactory because everybody could see them and it was interfering with the quality of the experience for a lot of the rest of the audience. So uh, we figured out a way to do closed captioning by inserting a special chip into its television sets and uh, so that only if you pressed a button would you see the captions. And now, all programs are closed captions, captioned on television. Many movies are closed captioned. We still do a lot of closed captioning for the TV and movie industry, and in, in fact have invented a system for movie theaters called rear screen captioning uh, that the Disney uh, theaters all have and many of the top end movie theaters around the country have. So there are many other innovations that took place while WGBH was in this building. Um, many firsts. We were, for example, the first people to cover tennis on television. Uh, we were the first to cover the Boston Marathon, believe it or not. We, in effect, created the long-form documentary treatment of an important subject. That led to history, long-form history programs. Ken Burns, who didn't work at WGBH at the time, but is involved with us now, uh, produced the Civil War and baseball and jazz. And, and that forum on American television really got incubated right here. I think, and I certainly feel, that the, all the wonderful creative staff at WGBH, which over so many years have really been the ones to uh, invent and incubate so many ideas for public media, are, would be very pleased by what this building is now being used for because it really, uh, it's, it's true to the genetic heritage of this building to be incubating ideas, bringing people together, connecting people from different disciplines, different expertises to make something new and interesting happen. That is in many ways what I saw as my role at WGBH over the years to do, to find these connections, put people together, figure out if something new and interesting and innovative could come out of it. And, uh, and we hope, uh, we wish the iLab well and hope that this is a huge success uh, for Harvard as well.